Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome all of you to the Charity Guild's biggest fundraiser of the year. And tonight is a very, very special night. And you'll find out in a little bit. But before we begin our proceedings for the evening, I would like to start with a prayer that we say every one, at every one of our meetings. You will find it on the last page of your booklet. And if you would please remain seated, and if you would like to read along with me, you please feel free to do so. Father of us all, we thank you for the many blessings in our lives. We gather today to ask your guidance as we plan for the work ahead. We believe that you have asked us to care for your people, the ones who are in need of nourishment, the ones who are in need of clothing, the ones who are in need of compassion, the ones who need a smiling face and a kind word. We know we are blessed to live in this land of plenty. Guide us as we gather the resources to share with those less fortunate. Help us to remember that those less fortunate are no less in your eyes. Guide our minds and our hearts and strengthen us to do your work today and in the days ahead. Amen. I would like to add one little comment. That prayer was written by Mary Jo Martin, our treasurer. Mary Jo? There are many dignitaries here tonight, and I would like to acknowledge them. We have Claire Cronin, our state representative. We have State Representative Jerry Cassidy. We have Councilman Bob Sullivan. And I know that Mike Brady, Senator Mike Brady, will be here eventually. Is he here already? Oh, he's here. Okay. Now, introduce to you the board members of the Charity Guild. Please stand as I call your name and remain standing. Shirley Azak Yunus. Shirley? I knew she was here earlier. Geraldine Creedon. <laughs> Patricia Dykeman. Barbara Ginelli. Pat Lawton. John Murphy. Dr. Laura Amore Murphy. Diane Nadeau. Julie Nicoli. Attorney Susan Nicastro. Suzanne O'Donnell. Diane Tasho Prince, Brenda Smith Burke, Jennifer Solomini, Stephanie Spencer, Christine Tenahan, Fran Varela. Our board of directors, myself, I am now the chairman. I became chairman this past month. Our vice chairman is Kate Federoff. Our treasurer is Mary Jo Martin. Our recording secretary is Arlene Janaris. And our executive director is Michael Molyneux. <clears throat> you know, to put a night on like this takes a lot of work. In fact, it was two days of decorating that we, we planned in this particular room. And Barbara Ginelli, the chairperson of this event, starts our planning in January, and we don't let up. Everything you see tonight is put together by our committee. Yes, even the flower arrangements designed were designed by Diane Prince and Fran Vrella. Now, I know you love them because I haven't heard one bad comment, but the, there are good, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is you can take the flowers. The bad news is you can't take the vase. But we have provided you with a blue plastic uh, plate that you can pick up on, on your way out if you want to take the, the, the flowers. And we decided that the person with the birthday closest to today's date will take the, take the flowers. Okay? And I think that's you, Bob. Yours is December, uh, October 18th. <laughs> My husband. <laughs> and I'm if I'm also very sorry, I forgot to add one more person. Everyone, please listen. There is one more dignitary that I forgot, I did not mention. 
And that is the mayor of Brockton, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Mayor, your honor. So you have the flowers and all those beautiful baskets. The artistry that went into it was by Brenda Burke. The restaurant row was conceived by Arlene Gennaros. And the wine pool, of which I think we have four bottles left. There's four bottles left. That was an idea, a happy idea, taken from a friend named Jenny White. And the book that you received when you registered was done by Mary Jo Martin, who stays up till all hours of the night to make sure everything is in place. And so our hardworking, committed committee are, if you would please stand as I call your name, Shirley Azak, Thuy Do Nguyen, Pat Dykeman, Laura Frederick, Lorraine Frederick, Arlene Gennaros, Mary Jo Martin, Michael Molino, Jane Moraes, Laura Murphy, Julie Nicoli, Susan Nicastro, Susan, Suzanne O'Donnell, Diane da Tasho Prince, Brenda Smith Burke, Stephanie Spencer, Christine Tenahan, Janet Trask, and Fran Varela. Thank you. We also have some val gala volunteers Lucilia Gonzalez, Amir Kazemi, Lisa Kelleher, Mary Sundstrom, and Ulysses Varela. Now the Charity Guild in 19, was, was formed in 1971 by a group of women who saw a need in the city of Brockton due to the shoe factories closing and other socioeconomic woes. The person to lead this group of ambitious women was Claire Chase. One of the other women was Muriel, Muriel Murphy. She was also chosen to be on the board. Muriel was the mother of Dr. Kevin Murphy and the aunt of Lorreen Frederick. Her passion to help those in need infected both her son and niece. As a result, Dr. Murphy's wife, Laura, and his cousin, Laureen, became board members. Now, as many of you know, from the invitation you received, we are honoring a very special person. If it remained a secret, that would be a big surprise to me this evening. So let's see who that person is. Yes, Lorraine. Lorraine Frederick, that is you. Lorraine joined the Guild 32 years ago. She has held every office there was and was the chairperson of many of the events that took place. Even though, even though she is no longer a board member, she continues to be involved in many different ways to say she really cares. If something needs to be done, she is right there to help us out. She continues to give unselfishly to the Charity Guild. Most of you know Lorene, but many of you do not know the trademark of the woman she really is. First of all, Lorene is married to Steve, who is as unselfish as she is. They've been married for 39 years. As a couple, they are the hallmarks of what a wonderful marriage is. Let me tell you a little bit about Lorene. She was born and raised in Brockton, as were her parents, Madeline and Walter Davis. She attended grades one through eight at St. Patrick's School, nine and 10 at De Monter Day Academy, 11 and 12 at Brockton High. She received the Bachelor's of Science degree in nursing from Catholic University of America. She worked seven years at the Cardinal Cushing Hospital as a charge nurse on the car cardiac telemetry floor. And she has the patience of a saint. The following is a little vignette that Steve wrote of his wife. Lorraine was treasurer when the guild separated from the Catholic Charities and established its first independent space on North Main Street. The front of the large rectangular space housed the thrift store. 
The back was the food pantry. A tiny section of the thrift store was partitioned off as an office for Loreen. It held a desk and a file cabinet. On the desk sat a computer, and on the file cabinet, a printer. Computer hardware and software of that era were notoriously fussy. They still are. Loreen would periodically ask me to fix some breakdown, and together we would go to the store during the weekend when everything was closed. And so it was that we were there on a nondescript Saturday afternoon with lights out and doors locked. My part was easy. Use the universal algorithm, shut off device, unplug, count to five, turn on device. And if unsuccessful, repeat the process. The office was large enough for only one of us, so as I worked my magic, Lorene was puttering around the store. Suddenly, we heard a pounding on the front door. Loreen ran to the door and shouted, we're closed. More pounding. Then a voice said, I need help. The voice was thin and weak and frightened. It was the voice of a person in need, a voice of desperation. Click went the, clock, went the lock, the door opened, a man entered, and I heard Loreen say, how can I help you? Alone in that tiny dark office, amidst a tangled mass of wires, I was never more proud to be her husband. Loreen got him clean, warm clothes from the store, then took him back to the pantry where she put together a three-day supply of food. She instructed him to come back on Monday when the pantry would be open and someone would do a formal intake. As he left, he said, Thank you. The voice had changed. It was no longer frightened. The desperation was gone. For the next three days at least, he would be all right. And Lorene's description of the event was succinct and descriptive. It's what we do here. Lorene, come forth. So tonight, Loreen, we, our friend, we salute you, we honor you, and we dedicate this night to you. May you always be blessed for all your altruistic deeds. Please know it is not just the Charity Guild who is appreciative of you, but all those lives you have touched with your unselfish nature are also grateful for all the things that you do for them. Now we have a couple of things that we would like to present to you. So if we may have Barbara and Michael. Just a little token of our appreciation. And now I'd like to invite Mayor Carpenter. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, it's a real pleasure for me to be here uh, this evening as part of the recognition of Lorraine and the great work that she's done over the years as part of the Charity Guild. So I have an official citation that I'd like to present to her. And it says, uh, official citation, be it known that the mayor of Brockton hereby extends his congratulations to Lorraine Frederick in recognition of over three decades of service to the Charity Guild. 
For over 32 years, you've done just about everything there is to do at the Charity Guild. From chairperson to treasurer to secretary to board member, there was no task too big or too small for you to handle. Your talents, resources, and unselfishness have greatly benefited the Charity Guild, and we are honored that you call Brockton home. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this citation to you as a symbol of our appreciation. And this citation is duly signed by the Mayor of the City of Brockton today, and it's my pleasure to present it to Lorraine. And now I'd like to inter introduce to you Claire Cronin, who is our state representative, and she also has a, a special citation. So when we get to present a citation, it's always a special thing but it's never more special than when you get to present one to one of your very good friends. So, on behalf of the House of Representatives, Laureen, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Laureen Frederick in recognition of your being honored by the Charity Guild and for your kindness, generosity, and service to our community. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Thank you. So Love, much. Claire, and my very dear colleague, Jerry Cassidy. I'm truly shocked and honored, and I, I, I'll never forget this evening. But I must tell you that it was um, women of the pre my aunts and my mother's generation that inspired me, and I hope that our generation inspires the next. And I, I must say that the women that I've worked with over the years in the Charity Guild are amazing, as you all probably already know that. But. Um, uh, it's been a blessing for me in my life to be able to work with them. Thank you so, so much. And I don't believe there are any other citations that are being given. <laughs> Forgive me if I did not know. <laughs> Just a reminder, little housekeeping things that the silent auction will be finished at 8.30, so you still have I mean, almost an hour left to uh, put your name on, on one of those papers. Um, the names of the highest bidder will be distributed to each table, and our checkout is located by the entrance. It will open at 9.15. I'd like to tell you about another event that's going to be benefiting the Charity Guild, and that's going to be held December the 2nd, so put it on your calendars. It will be a night of music featuring the Brockton High School a cappella group led by Matt Cunningham, Rich Cesarini and Steve George known as the Terrifics, and Jack Colombo with his drummer accompanying him as he plays four pianos. So put December 2nd on your calendars. And then in the spring, we are having another event for, a, for women only called the Little Black Dress. Look for information to come into the mail about this particular event. And now please enjoy your dinner, evening, and the fine music of the reminiscence. Thank you, everyone.
Take a short break. We have the reminiscence. Waiting, laughing, never weeping. Longer than 